Hey everyone, the name is Rick Dorn, and I think that when we think about confidence, I think we are the most inclined to think about the ESTP personality type. I think we carry a misconception of confidence as only a set of things or cognitive functions or personality traits. We associate a heightened confidence with taking to the stage, being in the center of attention, getting people to listen and hear you out of showing and having power and confidence in yourself and your ability in showing skill and ability and being able to play the game. I think we associate confidence with these things and I think we associate INFJs with lacking in confidence. Yeah, I believe that often we tend to associate INFJ for a lack of confidence due to a lack of wanting to participate in and engage in these said personality traits. INFJs often reject the center of attention. They often avoid the stage. They often distance themselves from various social situations and various common settings. They don't draw attention to themselves. They don't force or push attention to themselves. They don't create a lot of noise around themselves. They are quiet and soft-spoken. They are not going to assume or take on overt symbols of power. We are not going to dress up or stand up or put on a show simply to signify power and ability. We are not going to immediately want to demonstrate our skills and abilities against other people. We are not always going to want to show other people what we are good at or how good we are at something. So INFJs keep all of these things often to themselves and I think because of that we often look at INFJ and we assume oh it must be because they are lacking in confidence and that's why I call this the INFJ misconception of a lack of confidence. So. What I have to understand then, what you have to understand then is what is confidence and I believe confidence is a uh, belief in your abilities and um, I don't think confidence necessarily should constitute a belief in every possible ability. It should not constitute the belief that you are good at everything. It should not need to constitute the belief that you are awesome in all regards of society and capable of everything or anything. I believe confidence should primarily be manifested in the areas that you actually feel and value being good at. So I believe confidence should be found in the domain of your dominant cognitive functions and that means a belief in perhaps your theories and your ideas, a belief in who you are and your own sense of purpose, um, a belief in, uh, for me then, uh, ability to solve conflicts and uh, help humanity in some way or a belief in my own visions and long-term intellectual projects. I've had an unwavering belief in these things. I've had strong confidence when it comes to these things. I've always had strong confidence when it came to these things. But I've been accused of lacking confidence because I don't show my confidence in the normal way. So I believe that because I am not going to claim to know something I do not know or because I don't claim to be scientific, I must be lacking in confidence because I'm not going to be saying that uh, I figured out the truth or the answers to everything. I must be lacking in confidence. I think because I'm not immediately going to jump to the ability to demonstrate my skills, it might, I must be lacking in confidence. I hear these things and I wonder about these things because I feel to me confidence is also being able to admit what you are not good at without becoming anxious or stressed by the fact. So I believe confidence is the ability to also admit what you don't know and what you need to think about more. And I don't see myself as a finished product. I don't see myself as the one that has figured it all out and knows the answer. Instead, I often believe in my ability to cooperate with other people to get to the answer. I've never told other people that I find myself to be more intelligent than them. In fact, I've been more likely to want to rely on their intelligence and their abilities because I've recognized the limits of my own. I know what I'm good at and I know what I know and I know what I feel certain of and that is what I share in these videos. 
but I constantly work together with my community to figure out the things I do not know, the things I've not I've yet to figure out, the things that I am not necessarily as good at as the others. So I'm asking constantly for other people's help. I'm asking for video requests, for questions. I'm asking for ideas and insight. I'm asking you to come and share your articles. I'm curious about your videos. I'm watching other YouTubers. I'm reading other articles. I'm studying, constantly studying, because I believe there is more to learn. And I'm confident not because my answers are set in stone and precise and narrowed down and defined, but because I am willing to grow and because I'm willing to adjust and change and adapt and improve. And I find that, yeah, perhaps I have figured something out, but I'm not going to be setting exact parameters for what these things are, because these things are of a general and theoretical nature. And nature is complex and there are things we can never know for sure. So when we look at things on a theoretical level, we can make predictions, we can formulate theories, we can make ideas about something. But when we look at reality, reality has a tendency to contradict itself. There are ultimately very paradoxical factors about life. People are constantly going against their own personality types changing their own assumptions and doing things that are out of the norm. So what I've always been looking for is the diversity to my own theories and my insight and my, an ability to look at things from multiple dimensions where other people have been looking for tight and static boxes and definitions. I've tried to look for defini definitions that change over time and that adjust to your health, your experience, your level of maturity, your heightened consciousness. So... Often the things I say can never be simple. I believe there are simple facts out there, things that you can say in three minutes in a video on YouTube, but I also believe there are things that are complex and the things that are complex cannot be communicated and translated in a three minute video. I believe some things are things that you have to share and start up a discussion on and then People have to think for themselves and figure it out on their own. And it takes a while to recognize the level of nuance. And something I've always felt very confident in is my ability to see nuance. I may not always have all the facts. I may not always have the latest statistics. I may not always have done the latest neuroscience research. But I have seen nuance. I've read books. I've met people. I've had discussions. And I've studied people for many 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 years now i've studied myself i asked myself questions i've spotted bias i worked through bias i've gone deeper and i've realized things that i had yet to notice and one of those things was that i was not lacking in confidence as i thought i would have thought that i lacked in confidence and i certainly did to some extent when i started out I certainly did post videos sharing how confused I felt and how sometimes lost I felt with where I was going. I didn't know. I didn't know where I was headed. I didn't know if I was on the right path. I didn't know if I was going somewhere, but now I know. And that's an immense increase in confidence and stability emotionally. And it's a big relief of stress. Last year, I went through this moment of stress because I had no income, no steady job, no assurance of uh, where I was. I was in a new country, nothing was set in stone. I was just taking my first footsteps as a YouTuber, making my first videos, dealing with my first setbacks, you know. And uh, in these situations, uh, it's normal to feel lost and confused. And yeah, while I have been on the growth, and uh, moving towards uh, increased sense of reassurance and trust in myself, I also have those momentary dips. And I feel often to some extent these are natural and healthy. I think a person who cannot second guess themselves, a person who cannot be modest, a person who cannot show and share doubt honestly cannot have integrity. I believe if you have integrity, if you have the ability to be transparent and to show other people doubt and process and thoughts and questions, 
you also have a chance for people to help you in your quest for understanding. And you know, there are people like that, that like to do things on their own. They like to figure things out themselves. They like to be the, their own authority. They like to have the independence. And of course I like independence too, but I like some kind of collaborative independence where I can do my thing my own way, but where I can always lend on inspiration from other people. And so I have to be modest. I have to constantly tell myself to be modest and I have to constantly remind myself to be on modest because if I wasn't modest, I wouldn't be able to communicate with community. And so the way I've chosen to work with what I do, the way I've chosen to do these things is I've chosen to make YouTube videos, to write articles, to run a Patreon website. I've chosen to rely on crowdfunding and donations and I've chosen to re rely on reviews and questionnaires and personality tests and self-assessments because I thought this was the most honest approach. Using these things, using tests, using Patreon, using Discord and forums and online community. That was how I could maximize insight. I could have a steady stream of ideas being thrown out. I could have like a creative discussion and debate with all of you. And I think it's uh, no secret for those that have followed me for a longer time that I will always have questions because my priority is with the unknown. So my priority is with figuring something out. My priority is with what's next. My priority is where am I headed now? So my priority is always with what's out there in the future, in the long term. And I think 10 years into the future, 100 years into the future, and I wonder and I question and what I'm sharing with you guys is always the questions, not the answers. At least that's my goal. And because we tend to see a person with answers as more confident than a person with questions, the point still stands. We have a tendency to confuse confidence with something that is quite the opposite of the INFJ personality type. And because of this, INFJs are often mis portrayed as lacking in confidence and I know INFJs can lack in confidence and I know there is such a thing as lacking in confidence but I think to know truly if you are confident you have to look at what your dominant skills are what is the most effortless to you what is the most meaningful to you and that's the skills that you should be evaluating yourself on. If you're an artist, you should not be evaluating yourself on your ability to handle bureaucracy. That's not confidence. If you are an artist, you should be evaluating yourself on your ability to do art. Come on, stupid. Okay. Thanks everyone for watching this video. I hope the message helps you understand yourself a little better. At least that's the point of these videos. Thanks for tuning in. And if you like these videos, do check out my patreon.com website, patreon.com slash Eric Thor. Leave a donation, leave a pledge, send a question, send a video request, do whatever you like. Have a nice day and see you guys in the next video.